Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first li live daily show on photography on Facebook. And of course, if you're watching this later on YouTube, then thank you for tuning in. And by the way, starting very soon, you're going to be able to subscribe to this in iTunes as well. Pretty fun stuff. We're getting that all set up. So today's photo moment is all about shooting raw with the iPhone. Now, truth be told, this is something I've been wanting to talk about for a really long time. But there were some issues around shooting in a raw app on the iPhone and transferring over and doing raw editing and so on. And I don't know that they've all been resolved, but I have come to a conclusion on how things can work. And that's what I want to show you. So first of all, before we even fire up the app, how do you shoot raw on the iPhone? Okay, you can't shoot raw with the built-in camera app, right? You built-in camera app, the one that comes with your iPhone, you take a picture, it's always JPEG, that's it, you can't shoot raw. You need a third-party app to shoot raw. Now, there are a few out there. Um, I'm going to name three of them, and I'm sure there's there's a few more that I haven't gotten into yet. The first and most well-known one, of course, is Lightroom. Lightroom Mobile, which I don't think you have to have a Creative Cloud subscription to use Lightroom Mobile. If you wanted to sync up with your Lightroom on the desktop, then you have to have that. But of course, if you have Lightroom on the desktop, then you have a Lightroom Creative Cloud subscription. That may not be true because you can buy it as well. Anyway, not sure what it takes to get it. If you have a CC subscription, then you certainly have it. And you can put Lightroom Mobile on here and shoot with the Lightroom Mobile app and shoot in RAW. It tells you on there it's shooting DNG, and that's what you get. For those of you tuning in live, thank you very much. I know we started a little bit late, some Facebook snafus, but uh, as always, feel free to throw your comments down there. Shout out, say hi, let me know you're watching. And of course, if you have questions along the way, you know what to do. So you need a third-party app, so Lightroom is one of the most obvious ones. Now, Lightroom shoots in DNG, and you can edit to your heart's content inside of Lightroom. But one of the things you cannot do if you're shooting raw in Lightroom is export the raw file into the Photos folder, Photos app, on your iPhone to edit with another app. So let's say that you wanted to edit the raw file, not an exported JPEG, but the raw file in Snapseed, which does support raw editing, you can't shoot in Lightroom and do that unless you first go back to your desktop, copy the file out of Lightroom into Photos, and then sync it back and so on. So clearly not an ideal workflow. Now, that's not to say that it means that Lightroom isn't, isn't good for shooting raw because it's phenomenal and the editors that you have inside of Lightroom Mobile are really, really good. So that works absolutely well. But if you want to use something else, you're kind of stuck in the Lightroom ecosystem. So then it introduces two other raw apps. One is called Raw by 500px, and the other one is called Manual. And these are the two that I'll, I'll talk about. Um, I'm going to show you a few things. Uh, with those, you can do, see, in Manual, we'll take a look. I don't think there's a whole lot of editing, if any, at all that you can do in Manual. Raw by 500px has its own raw editing tools, which are quite nice. But you can also save out the original raw file and open those up into Snapseed. Now, I'm saying all of this now and not a month and a half, two months ago, whatever, because there were some issues with exporting the raw files and editing them in other apps and so on. I have since, I, I've actually spent some time talking with 500px, uh, working with their tech support, working with their engineers, trying to get to the bottom of this. As far as I know, they never, nobody ever got to the bottom of it, but I figured out something that all of us had missed. And this includes the engineers at 500px. And so, uh, which actually makes this quite, quite a viable solution after all. So here's, let me give you the summary of it, and then we're going to take a look at this. As I mentioned before, if you shoot raw in Lightroom, you're shooting DNG, you can edit the raw file in Lightroom, but if you save out the file, you have no process to save out the raw file. You can save out a JPEG, you can save a full-size JPEG, but you can't just say export original DNG raw file. It doesn't exist. Okay. Raw by 500px does have a feature that allows you to export the original. The problem that we ran into, and this it turns out that this wasn't just in raw by 500px, this is also happening in manual, which makes me understand or believe that it is an iOS issue, but as you see in a moment, maybe it's not. It exports out the original file. And if you then go and look at that original file in photos, what you're going to see is a tiny JPEG. It's like 837 pixels or something. It's really, really small. And through a bunch of kind of figuring things out, what we realized is that the raw file was actually there. If you synced it back to photos on the desktop, you would see the raw file. You'd see that DNG file. But what we're looking at in photos, photos for iOS, is not the raw file, but it's the embedded JPEG. Because photos for iOS doesn't actually read the raw file. In fact, if you sync it back to your desktop and you're looking at it on photos on macOS, 
you will still see the low resolution file. Even though you get info on it, it says it's raw, it says it's how many megapixels, but what you'll see is this crappy little low res image until you hit the edit button. And as soon as you hit the edit button, then it processes the raw file and you get the full resolution. So if you just hit edit and hit save, you've got the full resolution file. So that got me thinking, all right, well, maybe it's a similar type of limitation inside of macOS, right? So two things on this. This turns out to be true. Um, on, on, I said limitation on macOS, sorry, limitation on photos for iOS. This turns out to be true. Now, if you save your raw file from raw by 500 px or manual and then open it in another editor like Snapseed, you will get the full raw file. What I have not yet tested, which we're going to do live right now, is to see if I tap on the edit button in photos for iOS, if it actually reveals the raw file. I kind of don't think it's going to because the Photos app has never been touted as a raw editor. So I don't really expect it to happen, but it'll be a nice surprise if it does. So are you ready for this? Let's get this thing started. So let's fire up Yield iPhone here. And here we go. So the apps we'll be working with are going to be uh, Lightroom, of course. And then in my Photos folder, you'll see that I have, where do I have? I have raw up there in the top left corner. And where's manual? And there's manual in the uh, middle left. Now I'm not actually going to work in manual because it's, it's a great app. Very simple, very straightforward, manual shooting styles, um, you know, aperture control, what kind of thing. Actually, not aperture because it's an iPhone. Anyway, you have manual shooting controls, but we're just going to focus on RAW because for the points of this demo, it's all the same. Uh, actually, you know what? Let's start with, with um, Lightroom. So in Lightroom, so I think I'm going to have to rotate this and go full screen. No, we're good so far. In Lightroom, I shot this picture this morning, which I shot RAW, and it's you can see clearly, let's let's go ahead and if I rotate this and go full screen here, uh, which one, there it is. So this is a very high dynamic range. You can see there's uh, you know there's some stuff lost in the shadows, stuff lost in the high lost in the highlights, uh, and this is shot raw. Okay, so we've got this file here. Now, if I want to edit this in Lightroom, of course I can tap on the editing tools, and I can change the white balance as you can see there, temperature, tint, all this stuff, auto tone. I can do exposure, and if I take the exposure slider and I bring that way down. There's the detail in there and bring it way up and there's the detail in there. Now you'll notice that the image changed massively as soon as I tap something. And that's, let me undo this, undo, um, let's see here, actually, I'm gonna tap in the top right corner. Where's the restore? Uh, present from here, no, where's the restore? Somewhere in here there's a restore. Remove, show, hide info. That nah, doesn't matter, don't really care. Um, what you find in Lightroom, when you shoot raw in Lightroom, is that the image that you see when you first go to start editing it looks quite good because Lightroom has already done an amount of processing to it. As soon though as you start to edit it, it kind of throws all that away and you have to start over again. So actually with that said, let me just see here because I haven't tried this before. I'm going to go back into that image now that I've kind of messed it up and I'm going to tap on the auto tone. So it's right in the middle of the screen at the bottom. Tap auto, okay, it looks terrible. Okay. <laughs> so what it starts off with is, is good, um, but it's certainly not the end all be all. And as you start to edit it, you're kind of starting all over again. Okay, well, fair enough. But the important thing here is that we can't get it out because that's what I really want to talk about is getting it out of Lightroom or whatever we're shooting with. So let's take a look at this. and You'll see that I can't do that. So from here, I go to the export top near the top right, the little uh, you know box with the up arrow. And it says save to camera roll. I hit save to camera roll. And I can save small and maximum available, but that's it. Now, maximum available does not mean raw. It's going to save out a full size JPEG. And let's just let's just prove that. Um, let's see here. Yeah, I'll just tap maximum available. We're gonna save this out. The reason I'm hesitating is because I also have pictures already in the camera roll shot with the built-in camera that are gonna be roughly the same picture. Um, hopefully we can identify which one's which. So preparing and saving. Now I shot the same photo, not on a tripod, so it's not completely perfectly locked. There will be a little bit of movement between them, but I shot the same photo with the built-in camera app, normal built-in camera app, HDR, and then in Lightroom and then in camera raw. So we have basically the same photo to work with. Okay, so that's done. Let's now go to the photos album, all photos, and it should be that last one. Yeah, that is the one because there's the HDR. Okay, so that's the last one. Let's go full screen on here. And that, yeah, you can tell here, it's really not much has happened to it. This is pretty much I mean, actually, if we go back, there's, well, that was a terrible HDR out of the iPhone itself. That was horrible. There's the iPhone's just straight up JPEG, which is actually better. It's not bad at all. So there's the straight up JPEG. Clearly, we have some shadows lost in the 
back of the um, the barn there, and the highlights in that sun are, are you know, totally gone. Oops, let's get up that into screen. Where are you? There we go. The highlights in there are totally blown, but that's fine. Okay, and there's the HDR better in the highlights, but still definitely not perfect. And then there's the one that came out of Lightroom. Now, this one in Lightroom, uh, let's see. I don't know if you'll be able to see this. Let me do an info export. Yeah, you can. Okay, so I'm going to here. Let's go ahead and rotate now. And I'm going to do an info uh, with Metafo. And we should see, right, full size. So it's JPEG, but it's 4032 by 3024. So that is the full size image, full resolution image exported out as a JPEG. So remember, that's what came out of Lightroom. And just to kind of really drive this point home, let me go back a little bit. I think I can do this in this mode here. And this is, let's see here. There's the one out of the iPhone, the original one. So I'm going to do a send on that to open up this share screen and go to Metafo. And there again, we see. So JPEG 4032 by 3024, as expected. Okay. So recapping what we've seen so far, you've got an image shot well, two images shot with the built-in camera app as a JPEG and then as an HDR. You don't have any choice to shoot raw. That's what you get. And we can see the full resolution, 4032 by 3024, obviously a JPEG. Same thing is going to be on the HDR one. I don't need to show you that. From Lightroom, we shot raw, had the DNG file, have all the editing tools within Lightroom. But if I want to leave Lightroom, I export it. Even though I click the maximum, all it really means is maximum size. It has nothing to do with... Um, oh, I forgot to hit record. <sighs> For those watching... On YouTube, it suddenly got better quality. Um, the uh, the one that comes out of Lightroom is full resolution, as we just saw, 4032 by 3024, but it is not raw. Okay, all right, so that's that. Now, let's switch apps. Let's look at the raw by 500px app. And wait for that to fire up, uh, let's see, there's the pictures. Uh, that's fun, I don't remember shooting three of them, but apparently I did. Okay, open this guy up, open that guy up, there it is. And if I can do much, I can export, I, can really, I just really can't get info in here. The editing tool is just to show you briefly, um, if you tap on the editor, then you go into brightness here, you'll see down on the bottom, it says exposure, contrast, highlights, and shadows. And you can then change the exposure, change the contrast. Um, although, as you see, it's not real time. It's like as you're dragging, you don't see the changes. You have to pause and wait for it to go. So therefore, it is not my favorite raw editor right now. I'm just going to cancel this. Open that back up again. Okay, so this is the raw file. I'm going to go to the share menu and choose export original to camera roll. So you notice that's a difference here. We get this original option. So I hit export original to camera roll. I hit export original. To, oh, I guess it was already doing it. And I guess that's it. Okay. Let's go back to the camera roll and see. It did not do it because there's not a new file there. Let's try that again. Export original to camera roll. Come on. Fingers crossed. These fingers crossed as well. Back into the photos album. Looking at all photos. Maybe it's, oh, maybe it's doing something. Maybe it's processing. See the little spinner up in the top. We're going to give it a moment. That's odd. I don't really recall this happening before. It's the problem here. There's always updates. And frankly, updates aren't always for the better. Um, nope, nothing. Back to albums. I've got this blank tile sitting there. All right, I'm going to try one of the other. Oops, one of the other. Make sure there's not. Oh, there. see, look, there is this loading something blank. There actually is a file there. Two files that are both blank. You can see on the bottom. Well, that's not annoying or anything. So I'm going to select those, delete. This is going to be really disappointing if the raw exporter has broken again. Uh, I'm going to choose another. Since, I, like I said, I don't remember shooting three pictures. So I'm going to choose another one. Try this again. Export original to camera roll. So there's no feedback on the tap. Now it goes away. Let's go to the photos roll, the photos app. There it is. Okay. All right. So there's the one from raw by 500px. If I do a info on it, so I'm going to hit the share and go to Metafo, we'll see that it is a, it shows it's a raw image. You see that, that text on there. I don't think I can zoom in. I can't zoom into that. It shows that it's raw, but look at the resolution, 852 by 640. Microscopic. Uh, clearly, 
that ain't good. So let me cancel out of this. And if I double tap on this to zoom into it, I don't know how well this is coming through on here, but this is, that is the wrong photo syncing through. That is weird. Let's, um, God, that is bizarre. Let's try that again. There we go. That's the right photo. If I zoom into this there, you can even see that on this broadcast thing. It is super crappy resolution, right? So that is obviously, as we just saw, no good. Okay. So that's fine. I know that I can open the raw file in Snapseed, but what I said I wanted to find out was if I could edit this and access the raw file in Photos. Don't think we can, but we're going to find out. Okay, so I'm going to tap on the edit button. I'm going to make a change. Uh, let's see how I'll go into. Are you seeing this? You are seeing this. Good. I'm going to just go to the lightness, bring that up. Actually, not bad. Um, hit done. And now get info on it again. And let's see if it had done that processing on the raw file or not. The way we're going to know is if it shows the full resolution or not. Hit Metafo and no, so it's not. So it was doing that edit to the embedded JPEG. What I expected, but as I've said, when I was, as I was elaborating, as I was discussing what happened on the desktop, it occurred to me that maybe you could do it here, but you can't. Okay, as expected. So we've got this raw file photo that we have shot in the app raw by 500 px and we are now going to open somewhere else why the wrong image keeps showing up there it's so bizarre we're going to open in something else namely snapseed because snapseed rocks so back to yonder desktop um, launch the snapseed tap on open that's my baby uh, open from device and go to all photos make sure we got the right one. Oh, i edit shoot i need to revert that image because I've done some editing to it. So it's going here, select all, revert, revert to original, saving photo, reverting, reverting, waiting, 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 waiting. So how's your day going? Hey, for those of you watching live, throw out the questions. Throw out the questions. There's an error reverting this photo to original. Excellent. I love it when a demo goes as planned. Let's try that one more time. Revert to original. That's curious. If it still doesn't, then I will just trash it and re-export it from raw by 500px. Error. Excellent. Cancel. Get out of there. Select. You. Delete. Gone. And back into raw by 500px and export original to camera roll. Given the amount of shadow recovery that happened in there, I'm a little suspicious that it may have actually processed the raw file, but then not known what to do with it. It's an interesting theory. Anyway, all right, back in here, back to photos. Do we have that picture back? Yes, we do. Okay, so there's the picture again. Once again, proof in the pudding, share that image, go to, uh, where is it? Metafo, raw image, 852 by 640. Okay, good. And it's 9.7 megabytes. You see, this is no teeny tiny JPEG. Now we go back into Snapseed and we hit open and we click open from device and go into all photos and open that picture. And now I'm going to go wide screen here. Let's go landscape here so we get the whole thing. We know that we are looking at a raw file because on the bottom of the screen, you'll see there's exposure slider, but next to that is a WB for white balance. If I tap on that, I can choose an alternate white balance. And of course, like in any raw editor that is happening at the raw level. So it is not affecting the image. It's not altering the image in a, uh, on a pixel level. So that is part of the decode. So that tells me right there that this is the raw decoder. Also, if I tap on, let's get rid of that, tap on exposure. Well, we don't tap on it, sorry. Um, with the exposure selected, now with my finger, I can run up and down the screen and you see you've got all these controls, some of which you do not have when you're looking at a, um, a JPEG, temperature and tint being some of them, and then there's some other ones as well. So let's play with it. Let's see what we can do. So I'm going to... What do I do? Let's do shadow. Let's just do big old shadow recovery. Oh, God, that's horrible. Okay, we're not going to do that. Um, let's put that back. Let's go to exposure. Bring up exposure. So there is definitely some serious data in that file. And remember, this is still an iPhone picture, so let's not expect the world. Um, and then I think, um, well, I guess I have to bring highlights way down. That's kind of okay. It's a little flat looking. A little flat looking. Maybe bring the shadows up a little add some contrast back into it. I don't know. Definitely not the greatest image in the world, but we are 
editing a raw file. So now also, if you tap in the top right, the three dots, if I tap on that, and that is the wrong place to tap. Um, uh, oh, the zero. That's what I want to tap on. Tap on the zero. You'll see on the bottom left, bottom right corner, sorry, it's showing the develop menu. That is the raw editing. So now that I've done that, if I wanted to tap on the pencil and add something else, oh, look, even there you have development tools, develop raw. Um, I can do a tune image. Ooh, could I? <gasps> could I add another development tools? I, oh, if I can, if you can. No, maybe not. Okay, we're going to try something because this could be really, really cool. All right, let's, uh, I'm going to revert this thing. Um, revert, revert. Discard changes. I just had this idea that what if, what if I could do two raw decodes, basically layering it, do a raw decode for the ground and a raw decode for the highlights. Kind of don't think you you can, but ooh, that would be so cool. We're going to try it. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to, yeah, let's go landscape. Okay. Big, wide. And we are, where are we? Raw tools. Okay. Raw decode um, exposure. I am going to bring up the exposure of the foreground. Well, the whole image, but for the foreground. Click OK. That's a little bit too much. Let me let me revert that a little bit. A little bit too much. Edit that. Bring that back down a little. And say, that's all right. All right, good. We're going to do that. And then, um, OK, back up. And then I am going to oh, back in there, tapping on the zero to bring this up, tap on the develop, tap on, oh, I can't. Oh, bummer. I was looking for, OK, so what I was hoping to find when you are working with the other adjustment tools inside of um, inside of Snapseed, you can brush them. I was going to try and brush between two raw layers. Apparently not. Anyway, so all right, let's just try real quick, see if I can actually make this image look good. And then we're going to call it a day, because I showed you what I wanted to show you. If you want to shoot raw and you want to edit in Snapseed, Snapseed doesn't have a camera built into it. You got to use another app. So raw by 500px or manual are a great companion to this. I think they're all free. Snapseed's free. Raw by 500px is free. Manual's not, but it's only a couple of bucks. I'll put links to all these in the show notes. Um, OK, so let's go back into this. I'll just, uh, yeah, we're going to do it this way again. And. All right, edit this guy. So let's see the best I can do with this. I definitely need to bring the exposure up. Gee, it's really too bad I can't do multiple layers because this is definitely a multi-layered image. I mean, there's the sky brought way down. You can see other than the hottest part of the sun, we really do have a lot of detail in there. And in the foreground, quite a lot of detail as well. Um, but let's just bring it up to about there. Let's go to highlights, bring that down. It's really like I need a different adjustment tool in here, doesn't it? Just to really, really make it fly. But it is what we it is what it is. Contrast. Lost a little saturation in there. Let's bring some of that back in. A little structure might help the sky. Uh, bring the exposure down a touch. Maybe bring the exposure down a little and let's bring the shadows up a bit more. No. What about the black? Is there a black point? Highlight shadows, contrast structure, no. OK, so I guess that's going to be it. So original, affected, original, affected. It's not bad. It really isn't. I mean, it's an iPhone picture for crying out loud. And now, of course, I can go ahead and add other things to it, right? So let's go back in here and let's add a little, let's do the tuning. And uh, let's do, I want brightness. What do I want to do? I want to do, oh, you know, I don't want to, yeah, let's do tuning. OK, tuning. Um, we're going to do a little extra contrast in the foreground here, dial that up, bring up ambient. Ooh, yeah, ambience on the foreground. Actually, ambience, the whole thing looks pretty good. Huh, not too shabby. But I wanted to show for the foreground, so that's in there. I'm going to tap the checkbox up in the top right corner. Now you see it says one because there's one additional filter added. If I tap on that, I can then tap on the brush icon. That's what I was looking for earlier. I was hoping to see that in the develop, but there isn't there. And now I can brush this into, just using my finger, brush that into the bottom half of the image. That's pretty darn good for an iPhone picture, don't you think? I mean, seriously, that, oops, wrong screen. That is not bad. So anyway, that's what I wanted to show you. So again, if you want to shoot RAW on your iPhone, you can't use the built-in camera app because it doesn't support it. You can use Lightroom, but then you can only edit the RAW file in Lightroom. You can use RAW by 500BX, which has its own RAW editing tools, but I'm not a fan of them, especially because they're not real time. I think in principle, they look really good, but the dragging, I don't know. Uh, and then manual allows you to shoot RAW, but 
And I don't think there's really any editing tools in there, but it's a great tool to shoot the raw. So shoot raw in another app, export out the original and bring that into Snapseed. Or there's other raw editors out there, I'm sure as well, but Snapseed, I mean, come on, Snapseed's so awesome. And you've got it. I mean, really, look at that. That is, that is pretty darn cool there, isn't it? From a single raw iPhone picture, I would say that's not too shabby. Definitely not too shabby. All right, folks, that's it for today's photo moment. As always, if you are enjoying what you're seeing and you would like to support what we do here or what I do here, because there's not much of a we uh, here on the show, uh, go to, uh, where's it? this one here? Uh, no, that, oh, I've got the wrong lower third up. Where's my Patreon thing? Hold on a second. So I kicked off a thing on Patreon on the hope that maybe some of you guys who are watching this and enjoying this might care to toss in a few shekels because at the end of the day, I cannot do this forever. There we go. I cannot do this forever without financial support. So um, this is on YouTube. I make like this much money on YouTube for ad views until I've got, you know, Casey Neistat level followers ain't making a living doing that. So this is a passion project, but I would love to just, for this passion to continue. But at the end of the day, I got to feed my family. So if you enjoy this and you want this to continue, please do consider going on to Patreon. Um, the lowest contribution, I think, is $5 a month. That's like 25 cents an episode. I mean, really, if you're getting something out of this, just kick in at any level you can afford. I would really appreciate it. Photojoseph.com slash, no, patreon.com slash photojoseph, and that will take you there. Um, otherwise, you'll be able to see this pretty soon on iTunes. So watch out for that. Of course, I'll tell you when. And uh, that's going to show you one thing here that I got in the mail that we're going to be looking at in the in the future. This, for as you guys know, I'm a Lumix shooter, Micro Four Thirds. I have never shot with one of Sigma's art lenses. This is the uh, 60 millimeter f. Uh, that's dirty. Um, f 2.8. So it's 120 mil f 2.8 equivalent. Should be a gorgeous portrait lens. Being the art lens, they are supposedly very very nice, very dreamy, very sharp, very lovely. So I'm very much looking forward to playing with this. Sigma sent me this to, uh, to play with for a little while. So it's here. If you own one of these, let me know. I'd love to know what you think of it. I will be taking this out at some point in the near future to do some shots with it, and I will report back. Um, I will probably do some recording through the camera to show you guys how the whole thing looks um, in that whole real-time thing. So that's coming up. All right, that's that. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye. <laughs>